You know, there are few more iconic movie palaces, I was going to say in the world, but certainly in the United States and definitely not in San Francisco, than the Castro Theater. And besides things on the screen, there are a lot of things going on on the stage, and our next guest has been responsible for some of the more fabulous ones. Welcome, Mark Eustace. Thank you. Now, before we started, you told me something that I didn't know. The Castro Theater is going to be 90 They're years old. They're celebrating their 90th anniversary in August. Yeah. I'm going to be part of the celebration. I'm bringing back the first event I did there, which is the Poseidon Adventure with Carol Lindley. <laughs> and the Poseidon Adventure is celebrating its 40th anniversary. Well, that's impossible because that would make us both well. We just won't <laughs> go there. No, and but ca I'm bringing, Carol Lindley is one of my best friends in the world, and she's, one of, she's the one that sings, there's got to be a morning, morning after. after. Right. But she doesn't really sing it, but anyway. Um, no, so, Maureen McGovern. <laughs> no, well, yeah, well, she had the hit. Hit, yeah. But, um, so it'll be fun. You know, it's, um, it's beloved. Let's yeah, put it that way. Beloved. And it was the first thing I did there with Lawrence Hellman uh, 18 years ago. Wow. Now, let's back up a little bit. For those who don't know you as the entrepreneur of stage, how did you become... Well, I mean, you, you had become linked with stage spectaculars at the Castro Theater. How yeah. did that start? Well, it actually started because I was a filmmaker, and I couldn't make a living making movies. What so, a surprise. So um, it became very Mickey and Judy, and it was like, well, let's put on a show at the Castro. And the first show we did with Lawrence was Sick and Twisted Player Stepford Wives, and then uh, Anita Manga suggested that we try and get a celebrity. So we're like, ooh, celebrity. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so we called Carol Lindley. She said yes. So that was the first one we did. And, and what it, was it like? You just call up Carol Lindley and say, hi, I'm doing this I, I, crazy well, off yeah, the wall. Yeah, and, and God bless her, she took the bait. And we, she didn't know us from the whole wall. I have some very funny messages from her, uh, which you will, you'll read about it in my book. But um, <laughs> so she did it, and they always say the first is the best, mm -hmm. you know. So, um, you know, 18 years later, I've done some of the greatest icons. I've, you know, I did Jane Russell, I did Tony Curtis, mm -hmm. I did Debbie Reynolds, I did Ann Miller's last show, Sandra Dee and Troy Donahue, and mostly fabulous people who I've, you know, had great relationships, yeah. some of which have become friends of mine. Yeah, I mean, it, it's not fair to ask, but I mean, you know, do you have a favorite? I mean, I, I know someone who knows Jane Russell and said she was just like, she really was the epitome of Hollywood glamour. I loved her so much. And let me tell you, I didn't think I would. She's a right-wing uh, conservative uh -huh. Christian. Uh -huh. And I was told, I got really nasty phone calls from some gay guys before saying, how could you do Jane Russell? Mm -hmm. She's so conservative. She hates gay people, right? How can anyone that was in gentlemen Anybody prefer that's, yeah, yeah. Hair, makeup, hello. They, yeah. You know, they, they <laughs> love their gay boys. And she was like, so her, her, her person was like, don't tell her about the drag queens in the show. So she comes, she's like delightful, and then I, I, you know, she goes, so what's the floor show? I'm like, well, we have two people doing Little Girl from Little Rock. She goes, are they men or are they women? I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, well, they're men, but we'll put you in the green room. She goes, if you put me in that green room, I'm going to knock your block off. I want to <laughs> see the floor show. <laughs> and this time she was in her 70s, 80s? Early 80s. Wow. And delightful. And she had brought her granddaughter, who had never seen her in a movie before, 13 years old. Never seen in a movie wow. before. And I do these clip reels in my shows, and I did a 45 minute, she was a great jazz singer, I did a 45 minute clip yeah. reel of her, and I said, Jane, sit down for five minutes and just watch this. She sits down, five minutes later, is long gone, right? Mm -hmm. Watch the whole thing, she gets up, tears in her eyes. I mean, she gave me the biggest hug. Delightful, yeah. really, really wonderful woman. Yeah. Tru truly one of yeah, Hollywood's I think greats she was, gone. Yeah, I think she was my favorite, actually, huh. because of the surprise of her being so wonderful, despite right. you know, her politics. Yeah, was Debbie Reynolds a handful? Great. She, that girl can drink. <laughs> <laughs> She's very professional. So we she, know where the daughter got it oh from. Oh, my God. After, after the show, we went to 2223. I have never seen anybody drink a bottle of wine so quick in my life. <laughs> <laughs> she ordered it, and I'm a little, I, I turned around. It was gone. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> but delightful. And I, the thing I loved about her is she knew who the producer was, and she kept mentioning my name <laughs> during the show. Was, again, a Hollywood pro. It's a they business. Know, yes, they, they know, know who, who is paying the, the bills. Check. And it's like some of them like treat you like not very nice right. or you know, a defer. I mean, honestly, a lot of the people who are on the left who I've dealt with uh -huh. are the most unkind to me as a producer. Mm -hmm. You know, they treat me like the hired help, mm -hmm. whereas she is just like, was fabulous. She's a pro. And she knows how to d conduct an interview, yeah. too. Has it surprised you to see a movie palace like the Castro kind of have a second life? 
I mean, because I remember 20 years ago, then they were talking about, oh, well, oh, yeah, yeah, movie yeah. houses are going right, to go right, away. Right. No one's going to want to go to the movies anymore. Well, I mean, the Castro is just such a special place. I mean, John Waters calls it the Radio City uh, for gay people. You mm -hmm. know, it really is. I mean, you know, between the way it looks and where it's located, I mean, it's just magical. And right. I'm telling you, every filmmaker or every star, they just love it there. I mean, it's just, there's nothing like a Castro audience. It's yeah. like, it's so special. Yeah. And when I bring these people in, it's like, most of these people, they live in LA, they get treated really badly. Mm -hmm. There has, they get thought of as has-beens. Mm -hmm. You know, I give them these wonderful evenings where I really do it with love and respect mm -hmm. and a little sense of humor too, yeah. because they're drag queens. And they just love it, yeah. you know? So even the ones that come in are, are a little scared. By the end, they're like calling me yeah. up, leaving wonderful messages. Yeah. I talk to them. Now, I remember a few years ago reading in the paper that you, I forget what it was, you said that this is going to be my last yeah. show <laughs> unless I make a go of it. What was it? And you It was Romeo and Juliet yeah. with Olivia Hussey. Let me tell you, I thought it was going to be a flop, right? Uh -huh. I'm like, well, I'm going to try it. The biggest show I ever had was Everyone wanted, remembered that scene from when they were boys uh, with it, the... That was it. And I have a clip from that show on YouTube. It has gotten almost 400,000 hits. I mean, it's unbelievable. People so, love that movie. I, people would tell me their life stories. They call, I saw that movie when I was 14 years old, and oh my God, she was so beautiful, or he was so yeah, beautiful, yeah. or his butt up in the air. Yeah, just, yeah. And, and honestly, that was my first time in a movie theater where I got an erection. Yeah. So there you go. Well, I mean, that was a classic movie, and you're saying that it saved your career. It did, yes. Now, <laughs> The next part of your career, uh -huh. you've been doing a lot of stage stuff, not at the Castro. You were directing this light musical comedy, Marat Saad. I know. It's Tell nice. us about <laughs> it. Being well, ironic, of course. Well, honestly, uh, you know, I'm kind of running out of people to do at the Castro, although there will always be a has-been around the corner. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. That's going to be your marketing <laughs> line. Mark Eustace, looking for has-beens has -beens around, around the corner. Um, and I don't believe they are has-beens. They're, they're wonderful people. But anyway, I, you know, it just gets, I, I don't want to become a cliche or a stereotype, and I like to always, you know, raise the bar and step it up. And um, I had been wanting to do something theatrical and something serious for quite some time. And this all kind of got conceived in November and stuff when the Occupy movement was happening. Mm -hmm. And there was this real dialogue around the disparity between rich and poor and the 99% and the 1%. <coughs> um, in November, my brother died. And um, he was a very sad person. He was a loner. I mean, you know, people talk about gay people being marginalized. If you have mental illness in this society, you are so marginalized. Well, and of course, one in four Americans either has yeah. a form of mental illness or deals with it yeah. with a family or loved one. And, you know, he was obese. He was like, uh, he had a lot of problems. And he never had any friends or anything. So he left some money to, to me. Not a lot, but enough that I'm like, the morale, the moral of the story was it was so unexpected and he never got to really enjoy his money that you better do what you want and need to do on this earth while you're still here because mm -hmm. you don't know how long you're going to be here. Mm -hmm. And Marat Saad was always something that I really loved. I grew up in the 60s and, you mm -hmm. know, big radical and the Judy Collins medley of songs, Marat, we are poor, but the poor mm -hmm. stay poor, mm -hmm. always was near and dear to my heart. And and I love Thrill Peppers, too. I mean, I just love them. Because this is a Thrill Peppers production. It's production, yes. And so I just thought that it would be a really great connection between me stepping up and also them getting uh, doing something more serious outside the realm of the cockhead stuff and in a larger theater because uh, what theater is that at? it's at the Brava theater which is 350 seats and mm -hmm. and, and a wonderful space I remember beautiful uh, space uh, what was her name Ellen Gavin yeah restored it now God it has yeah, been 15 yeah. 20 years ago yeah, yeah. Uh, so you know so it's a step step forward and a step up for us all. We're all very nervous about it. It's going well. And, um, but it's just, a, it's a great play. It's a, it's based, it's Marat Saad and, and it's a history of the French Revolution as told through the eyes of the Marquis de Saad uh, with the inmates of the Asylum of Charlatan. And, mm -hmm. and it really is historically accurate that the Marquis de Saad put on these plays in the asylum that he was interned. The great thing about it is that in the text of the play, it, uh, the play takes place on July 13th. And that's the opening day. day. He was actually John Paul Morales. Was that just luck? Mm, uh, there is okay. nothing. Yeah, yeah, nothing, yeah, nothing not luck does not exist. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Serendipitous, Serendipitous, I would say. Yeah. Um, but he was actually assassinated on that day. And then, of course, the next, next day, day was Bastille, Bastille Day. day. So it's, you know, 
and it's Friday the 13th. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. An another great anniversary of the French killing people, you know, the Templars. Well, yeah. it's just such a, uh, and the play really deals with revolutionary movements and the excitement and disappointment, disillusionments, mm -hmm. the craziness around them. You know, we see it at all. I mean, people screaming and yelling. The tagline for this one is, we're all a little mad. Mm -hmm. And mad, we're using the word mad in both senses right. of, of, the, of the word. And so hopefully, you know, it will connect to people. Do you think that the Occupy movement has petered out? Yes, and I think, uh, yeah, I do. And I, you know. How does that make you feel? Um, I, it pisses me off because they didn't have the attention span to keep it going. It's like everybody these days are on their devices and they're like, oh, this, this, this. You know, and I was seeing things on TV. Oh, this is going to be the biggest revolutionary movement ever. Michael Moore on you know, MSNBC. Oh, we're, you know, we're going to fight the revolution, la, la, la. You know, uh, they went into hibernation for the winter. They never came back, you know. And mm -hmm. But it's the same typical <coughs> thing with the left of infighting within factions, within factions, within factions, within factions, which is what Murat Saad is about. That, yeah, we, and, you know, we were ta I was, as we were in the green, we were looking at that film about the Spanish Civil War. Right, you know, right, people right. say, Franco conquered Spain. Right. Well, yeah, but the left <laughs> kind of <laughs> ate itself and allowed him to they, pick up the crumbs. They all do. And, um, I, you know, I'm so thankful that, people are really getting behind Obama mostly now mm -hmm. on the left, but they were doing it before, like two years ago. Everybody was like, oh, he's sold us out, la, 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 la. Yeah, what do they want? Yeah. Well, well, and they, that's a question, not a rhetorical. Right, what right, what right. do you think they want? Right. What do you think the left wants of Obama? Um, they always want something more than he's willing or can give. And mm -hmm. so he's like, you know, he, he does something, they set the bar higher. And, you know, some of that's good, but at the same time, you have to... I always believe, I mean, I, I was so moved yesterday by the whole health care thing. I mean, mm -hmm. it was just so exciting to see something actually get somebody something done, mm -hmm. you know. It not only did it pass through, but it passed the muster of constitutionality, you mm -hmm. know. And got, you know, the presidents have tried and never succeeded in doing it. Took 60 years. You know, it's just, it's, it was really, really moving. I mean, right. I mean and, and Nancy Pelosi's speech about Teddy Kennedy, you know, she almost cried. And it's mm -hmm. like, it was a great moment. Yeah. You know, so, you know, we're living in a very exciting time, and this play really deals with that, you yeah. know, and, you know, with the revolutions that are happening in, in you know, the Arab world with the Egyptian. I mean, you see in the, there, it's like this exciting revolution that had turned really horribly ugly. Right. Now it's going in another direction. But, um, you know, revolutions still need to happen. Right. It's like we still need to be engaged. We need, still need to be socially active. Now, so, you, so Thrill Peddlers has a reputation of doing kind of fun, light, wonderful, right, right, right. half-naked stuff. Right. This is, a, this is a political play. It's a political play, and also, uh, Russell, we did reach out to the acting community at large and had open auditions, and so there are new people in the company, and one of the goals was to try and, like, you know, bolster the acting credentials of the, of the cast as well. So we have some new people. It's a very interesting mixture of straight and gay people. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we have some real people with real mental illnesses in the mm -hmm. show, which I love. Mm -hmm. You know, we have an 18-year-old kid who just graduated from Lowell, who got mm -hmm. the Ch Carol Channing scholarship at Lowell. <laughs> Adorable. Uh, Connie Champagne is in it. Right. Uh, Tom Orr is in it. Rumi from the Coquettes are in it. Uh, the music is fabulous, and it's musically directed by Strumbly Caldwin. The costumes are by Beaver Bauer, who I was in The Angels of Light in the right. 70s with. So you've, you've, she you've did uh, Tales of the City and Teatro Zanzani. So you've got the whole pro team. Yes. Well, we hopefully it's going to be a lucky Friday the 13th <laughs> for I you. I hope so. <laughs> Tickets are 863 <laughs> <laughs> Always the salesman. Right. We've been speaking with Mark Custis about his production of Marat Saad. Next up, we're going to speak with Shane Mayer about digitally marketing candidate Barack Obama. We'll be right back.